What's going on, everyone from Low Kick MMA? My name is Dan Podolsky. I'm joined with Mitch Ramirez. He is set to headline week four of Dana White's Contender Series on August 26th when he takes on Carlos Brace. Mitch, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, of course. And just first off, how's training been going and how are you preparing for this fight? Been going really well, man. I I had a lot of time to prepare for this one, so I put in a light, a really long and thought out professional camp. So you know everything went well. I'm healthy, good. My weight's good. Everything's good. So it's just you know did my last hard practice today. Fights on the 29th, which will be Tuesday, and then go get into it. And I just realized. I, I think I screwed that one up. I said it was the 26th. Korean Zombie card is 26. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a two. Well, it's confusing because it's a Tuesday, right? Yeah, it always, yeah. yeah. It throws people off. Your first, your yeah. first the 29th, Dan White's Cancer Series Tuesday. That's on me. But anyways, have you gotten to watch any of Carlos Prade's previous fights and what stands out to you? And what do you think gives you the advantage over him? Um, I mean, he's a – yeah, I've, I've de- we've definitely done our film study and our research on him. He's, he's a good striker. He's got a lot of striking experience, Muay Thai experience. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think that as far as advantages go, everything I, – I think I can hang with him in the striking, and I think I've got an advantage on him with the wrestling and the grappling, and I've definitely got an advantage on him with the mental toughness and just the – the desire, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm different than a lot of guys. Just, I don't, you know, for me, it's like, I feel like I, 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 I still feel like I have something to prove, you know, a lot of these other guys, you know, you have that much experience. You've done all this stuff before he's, he's been in these big shows. He's done this stuff before, but for me, it's like, this is my shot, you know? And I, I got started a little bit late due to some, you know, life circumstances and stuff. So for me, this is my whole life. It's been my whole life for a decade. It's all I do. All I do is MMA. I don't do Muay Thai. I don't do any of that shit. I fight MMA in a cage and, you know, I, I spar in a cage and everything I do is in a cage. So, you know, it's, it's my bread and butter. I've been doing it since I was a boy. So I think I, you know, while he's a good striker and he's a good Muay Thai fighter, I have the MMA advantage on him. I am a better MMA fighter than he is. And you talk about that because you finished six, six or seven wins four knockouts, two submissions. Is there one part of your game that you consider to be your strongest or you just feel like a really well-rounded mixed martial artist? You know, I, I think that, I mean, I definitely grew up wrestling and stuff like that. So that's probably like where I'm most comfortable. But at the same time, like I have power that is uncommon for my striking. So I I think it's just a matter of, it's just matchups, you know, styles make matchups and everything else. So, um, but for me, I I, I feel like I'm, in my heart, I'm a grappler, but as far as like my gift goes, like my gift is the power of my striking that sets me apart. You know, even with guys that are, you know, more experienced or guys that, you know, might be a little bit more technical when, when we start banging and I touch them, things change quickly. So. And certainly that was shown in your last fight, you know, knocking Jeremy Holloway out with light kicks, you know, it's tough to yeah. do. Yeah. And that was honestly, that wasn't even the game plan at all. You know what I mean? Like that was, that was, you know, that's another thing where I feel like I excel as a fighter is my ability to make adjustments in real time, you know, making reads and, you know, not getting married to a specific outcome or, or a, you know, a thing. It's like, you know, you always have a game plan and you think you're going to do what you're going to do, but you got to be ready to do whatever happens. And it's a fist fight. So, you know, that's, that's where I pride myself in, in setting myself apart is, is my ability to adjust in real time. And that's what that Holloway fight was. It was, I thought he was going to do something different than he did. And when he did that, it made me have to make an adjustment in real time. And the leg kicks were there. So I chewed his legs until he couldn't stand up anymore. Hey, it worked out great for you. And, you know, you're seven and oh, still young to the game in MMA. Mm-hmm. Had an extensive amateur career. What caused you to get into MMA at the start and turn pro? Oh, so, I mean, I, I found MMA when I was about 14, uh, just through like blockbuster DVDs of UFC and pride and, I'd always been a boxing fan. And like I said, I grew up wrestling on and off. And that was like something that I I was always good at. You know, I was always good at physical altercation. I was a good athlete, but I was kind of a knucklehead. And then by the time I was like 14, 15, I was, that's when I found MMA. But it's also when I started doing drugs and kind of hanging around bad crowds and doing all that kind of stuff. And I ended up, you know, by the time I was in high school, I'd been, you know, I went from being addicted to pain pills, to being addicted to heroin, to being fully strung out, you know, fully, full gutter junkie for a couple of years. And I was able to pull myself out of that by the time I was about 20. But at the same time, you know, about 19 ish, almost 20 is, is when I was starting to do better. But I, I, and I was starting to train again and I was like, all right, I'm going to fight and I got to find a fight. And I was looking to take my first amateur fight. I was about 19. And then I got arrested on the, on some crazy shit I did when I was high and they put me in prison for about three and a half years. So that but that time was kind of like uh it sucked but it was necessary and that's you know one thing i talk about is like 
my mental toughness and my desire and like what, what I put into this on a daily basis is different than a lot of guys because I sat in, I sat in a cage for years just dreaming of doing this. You know, I would cut out all the fighters only magazine pictures and hang them on my cell wall. And I would visualize and see myself becoming a UFC fighter. And, you know, anybody that I talked to about it would be like, you know, would laugh, you know, they didn't believe it. You know, they didn't think I could do it. And, you know, every, it's like crabs in a bucket in a situation like that too. You know, anybody, you're trying to do something positive. Everybody wants to pull you down to their level. And uh, I withstood that and I didn't fall and I didn't let them pull me down. And I stayed healthy in there and I didn't use drugs while I was in there. And I didn't, you know, get myself in trouble. I, I changed my life and I taught myself how to be a man. And when I got out, I was 23. And that was, and within six months, I had my first amateur fight. And, you know, the rest is history. I've continued to go on, you know, I'm on a 12 fight win streak. So uh, that was, that was what saved me, I guess. MMA is what saved me. You know, I think prison is what, you know, MMA found me early and it was something that was always positive. It was something good that I could do that gave me confidence, but I was struggling so badly when I, as a young man that, uh, I, I lost the fight to my demons for a few years, but when I got it together, it was like that, that experience changed me. You know, you, when you have a, you know, when you go through what I went through at such a young age, you know, I mean, I went, I mean, and before that I was in trouble too. It wasn't like it was all good, but the time I was 14 to 18, I was in and out of juvenile correction facilities and work camps and everything else. And it was just a tough go. You know, I was just always struggling and, you know, to have gone through everything I went through and to make it out the other side, you know, be okay and, and still be young enough to pursue this. It was like, I dreamed every day of being able to do this. So I don't, I don't waste that now. You know, it's something that is always in the forefront of my mind. It's like, it's crazy that I'm here because of what I went through to be here, but it's also not surprising to me because like I said, like this other, these other guys, dude, you can go get a different job. There's not a lot, there's a lot of jobs I can't get, but this is one I can get and that I really love. So you're not going to, you're not going to take that from me. You know, you're, you you better be really, really, really fucking special if you think you're going to challenge me for that. So, yeah, I mean, that that's inspiring to hear, you know, just that story. I, d I didn't know that at all. But, and, and, you know, going forward as you continue as a mixed martial artist, that sort of motivate you to prove like Mitch Ramirez, you know, I'm not going to be known for, you know, where I screwed up when I was, you know, younger, but I'm going to go and be a world champion. Is that sort of what motivates you is like, push past your past and kind of keep going forward and just prove like I'm not the same guy I was. I'm a better person and just a better martial artist for it. Yeah, man. It's like, you know, I just got, I just got tired of, of, you know, being a loser. You know, I just was tired of, of, of failing and I was tired of watching all my friends die and I was tired of, you know, being locked in cages like an animal and being told when to eat and being told when to sleep and being told, you know, what you can and can't do. And, you know, it's just like it, you know, that's like a, it's very degrading, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not a fun spot to be, you know, when you find yourself in those situations. So, you know, for MMA, to, it was my lifeline, honestly, like it was like my lifeline, but when I, but it was like, you know, it was my lifeline, but I grabbed a hold of it so intensely almost that like the energy that basically the energy that I was having to, dissipate into MMA was so intense that I believe it's the reason why I'm here. You know, it's like, well, other guys get injured or they get tired and they want to take a day off and they go home. It was like, you know, I just, there's no way. Like I, I knew like it was there. I, I, there's no failure. Failure is not an option for me. Failing is dying. You know, that's really the way I've, I felt and I still feel, um, you know, cause there's other stuff I could do, but there's nothing really else that I want to do that, that makes me happy. That makes me feel like this, that I'm this good at, you know? So for me, it's like my second lease on life. You know, it's like, I went through everything I went through to be able to do what I'm doing now. And because I'm here in spite of that, I'm special, mm -hmm. you know? So I take that with me and that gives me a lot of confidence. You know, I see guys, I break guys mentally all the time, whether it's in practices or, you know, in fights, you know, I just, I don't, I don't go quietly you know so yeah yeah and, you know it's it's really inspiring to hear i i give you a lot of props for being so like comfortable talking about that so i really i really do give you a lot of props and you know does it make you does it make fighting feel having gone through what you've been through you know knowing like okay i beat addiction i i went through prison i've, I've beaten all these things does that make you know being locked in a cage and fighting someone in mma does it make it feel almost a little bit smaller 
comparison. Like, you know, if I've beaten drug addiction in the prison system, you know, I can beat another human who's in front of me in a cage. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like that's one of the biggest gifts I got from my experiences, to be honest with you, was the volume is a lot lower on a lot of other things. And while in some parts of my life, that's negative, you know, like some of the, I mean, you, the scars and the stuff, you know, from, from what I've been through have negative impacts too. There's, there's parts of my life that are potentially permanently affected from what I've been through in my life. But at the same time, there's, there's a silver lining there of that mental toughness that I don't get scared in the back. I'm not afraid to get physically injured. I've dude, I've overdosed and I should be dead, dude. Like I've had, I've been hospitalized and everything off of more, so many times in my life, like that. It's like, for me, it's like, I, I don't fear. I don't have the fear that most people have going into these fights. I don't have the nervousness. It's like, this is what I do. You know, it's like, this is, you know, I've been in a lot of fights where there is no ref and there is no rules, you know? And it's like, you might die if you lose, you know? So it's like, to me here with a ref, it's, this is, this is awesome. I mean, it's still a fight. Don't get me wrong. Like I get a little bit of nerves and everything else like anybody else, but it's not nerves about, it's not the same type of nerves. I feel like most people feel like for me, it's like, I don't want to let the people like the nerves I get are, I want to prove everybody who believes in me. Right. You know, I, I want everybody who's invested in me and who didn't give up on me. I want them to have this moment too. You know, it's not, it's not because I'm afraid I'm going to lose. Or I'm going to hurt. I've lost many times in my life. I've lost a lot of things. You know, I've, I've had a lot of setbacks in my life. That's, that's not what gives. And so that doesn't give me nerves. What gives me nerves is letting, letting the people around me down that believe in me, that have invested in me. So that's one of, and it gives me a lot of power, you know, cause it's like, okay, like I'm willing to sacrifice more than most of these guys. Like check the kick, dude, I'll kick it again. You know, it doesn't, I, I'll roll out of here in a wheelchair with my hand raised. I, it does, I don't give a fuck, you know? So you know, a little intense, but it is, it's who I am, you know, and it's, and it's why I've been as successful as, as, as successful as I've been as a fighter. So yeah, it's, it's a big, uh, big advantage on the nerves and the mentality going in, man. It's like, this is, this is fun, man. There's a ref here and I get paid and people, and it's positive and people will love me for it. You know, other, it's a lot better than, oh fuck, you know, are these guys going to jump in? How's, oh shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a different, it's a different vibe, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be where I'm at for sure. Yeah. Well, I, Mitch, I definitely give you a lot of props for being so comfortable talking about that. You know, it's, it's really inspiring to hear that. I guess just transitioning and on a bit of a lighter note, you know, you're training at syndicate MMA now in Vegas, you know, you moved to Vegas about a year and a half ago. How has that helped you and who've been your main training partners to this fight? Oh yeah, man. Moving to Vegas has been a huge benefit just due to the amount of partners and the MMA experience in the room at syndicate. Um, that's why I moved out here was I can't, I actually just came out for like a couple of weeks just to kind of get some extra training in and everything else. And once I got here and I saw the level of the training in the room and the work I was, I was getting and how hard I was being pushed by every, I mean, it was like, you know, where I'm from in Utah, there's some good guys, but there's not that many good guys. You know, there's maybe like less than a dozen guys that are like, that have like legit skills, you know? So, and probably less than five that are like world-class skill anywhere. You know, like there's a lot of guys that are like good, decent, but there's, you know, it's just, I mean, Vegas is special because of that. Cause there's just so many high level guys that come through. Um, but that's really what motivated me to move out here was where in, in Utah, I would have like, you know, if I got five rounds, two of them are going to be tough here. If I get five rounds, I'm lucky if four of them are tough, they're probably gonna be five fucking tough. So, uh, as far as training partners and stuff go, man, it's, it, they roll through, man. There's, there's a whole stable of them, but this camp I've been able to get rounds with, you know, every, you know, guys like, uh, Sasha Plotnikov is a guy that I just got, you know, he's a good striker, karate combat, UFC vet, um, Alejandro Almeida, you know, PFL champ, everything else, ex UFC, he's getting back in now here soon. Um, you know, guys who are frequent, you know, Michael Chiesa was here for part of my camp because he was in camp. Uh, I mean, the list goes on, man. There's a lot of guys, a lot of guys that you never heard of that are, you know, D1 wrestlers and highly accredited grapplers, you know, world champion grapplers, world champion uh wrestlers and and some really good strikers too so i've I've had i've had no uh shortage of of the of the looks i need and the bodies i need in this camp so it's been great and so you know you talk about being from utah the ufc has had you know cards in salt lake city back-to-back years is that a goal for you to get on a card for the ufc in your hometown of utah yeah, it's actually, I just actually talked about this in a different interview, but they, you know, the guy asked me like, oh, you know, when you win this fight, who's your, you know, who do you want for your debut and where do you want to do it and stuff like that? And it's like, 
I'm not even thinking about who I've got a guy in front of me right now, you know, that I'm about to go fight. And that's all that matters. I got to win this fight. But my dream has always been to fight in my hometown, you know, has been to fight in Salt Lake City. Uh, that's really where, you know, I went to the I was at the Usman Edwards card. And man, it was sold out and it was so packed. And it was like, I was proud, dude. I was proud to be from Utah. You know, I was proud to to not say this is where I'm from because the fans were so, so good, dude. And the and I mean, the whole after the after the fight, man, the entire downtown district party, dude, it was crazy. Yeah. Like after parties, freaking people. Dude, it was just nuts, dude. And people like that aren't from Utah. They look at Utah as this place where like oh, everybody's a square or something like that. And it's like. And then, you know, a lot of the guys here in Vegas were like, oh, man, it's in Utah. That's that's weird. And I was like, just 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 chill out. And come on, you know, just follow me around. You know what I mean? And, and afterwards, everybody's like, I love Utah. I love Salt Lake. Everybody loves Salt Lake now. And they came back, you know. So my that's something that I've always dreamed of. And especially after going there, it was like I just felt in my gut that like one day I'm going to be I'm going to be in this cage here in this arena in front of my hometown. And I'm going to and I'm going to show out, dude. And, and now we're here. And so for me, that's like something I've always dreamed of is is getting into the UFC and then fighting on a packed Salt Lake City card. So, yeah, it's a good question. And, and certainly with the last two years, you know, Usman versus Edwards, insane card capped off by Leon Edwards' head kick. And then this summer they go right back and you guys have one of the best cards of the year that's capped off by another head kick with Justin Gaethje. Incredible. And the, the atmosphere, you know, I, I haven't been able to go to Salt Lake City, but the atmosphere watching those from the pay-per-view, it just seems amazing. I just... I'm sure the UFC will continue to go back to Salt Lake City. And oh yeah. I'm sure you'd love to be on that card at some point. And just, you know, going forward, looking at your career, you know, seven and zero as a professional, still getting going, very much, you know, yet to hit your prime, which is a great thing for you to be in. Is there one fighter who you try to model your game after as you're like coming up as a up and coming MMA fighter? You know, I don't think that there's I I look at different guys and what they do. You know, I think that there's not like one specific guy that I'm like, oh, you know, I want to be just like him because I'm unique, just like he's unique. He's got his own experiences. He's got the things he's been through, the things he likes to do, the body style. But the, I just respect anybody who's exceptional. And, you know, I, if there was one person that I'd be like somebody that I never miss a fight on and somebody that I just love to watch and is so impressive to me, it's definitely Alexander Volkanovsky like that. That guy to me is like. He's the GOAT, in my opinion, dude, especially after that performance against Islam and everything else. It's just like he's a guy who's from a different sport, didn't start MMA as a child, anything else. But his work ethic, you know, he's got good coaches around him, but you can just tell the professionalism that he brings to his camp and his mentality, the way he trains. And you can see it in his performances, you know, so guys like that that really put the professional and professional sport, professional MMA, because let's be honest, MMA is like the most unprofessional professional sport in the world, probably. And one of them for sure, you know, some there's like, there's so many different ways to skin a cat essentially. And there's so many guys that just like do it like an amateur, to be honest with you. And, and, so, and, and more so now you don't see people getting away with it as much, but anybody who is able to do what he's done and the way he's done it, and not just off of like a one trick show. I mean, you saw it. What he did to Yair, Yair was very different than what he did to Islam. Was very different than you know some of his other fights. Like he's he's able to adjust his style to his opponents, and he's so talented and, and hardworking in his different areas that it doesn't matter. So that's that's definitely a. If there's one guy that I try to emulate, it's that. It's the, it's the fight IQ. It's the it's the adaptability. Right. It's the it's the mental toughness. It's the I'm winning no matter what. So yeah. Yeah, and the other thing I'll say about Volkanovski, I think he's he's one of the most impressive fighters in MMA history in that, like, the card that he was dealt, you know, he's undersized, former yeah. rugby player, you know, used to be overweight, and just see him now, probably, I, I would be willing to say the most well-rounded mixed martial artist in the UFC here now, besides maybe John Jones. The guy has absolutely no weakness. And you can just yeah. see in just his toughness mentally and how hard he trains. It really is incredible to watch Volkanovski. No, yeah, that's that's why it's like, like I said, it's like he wasn't like this born and bred to be perfect or this guy with all this crazy experience somewhere else. It's like, nah, dude, he went from rugby to MMA. He doesn't have a hundred kickboxing fights. He doesn't have a world championship in wrestling or jujitsu. Like, he's a rugby player. He's just a great and and like you said, like it wasn't like I just respect that, you know. And I and I not to say that I don't respect like the guys that do come with big credentials, like what they've done in their sports. Like, you know, a guy like Bo Nickel, really impressive. You know, come in with the low amount of experience he has in MMA and just dominate people and 
you know, I, I, I respect, I respect high level skill and it's not, not just an MMA, but in any sport. Cause I know how hard it is to get good at anything to, to be world-class in anything takes so much hard work. So much. It's like, it's hard to explain because people think about like a hard workout. Okay. We've all done a hard workout. We've all, anybody who likes to work out has probably done a workout that made him feel sick. That made him sore for a week. Everybody's done that. But now do that every day, multiple times a day for years and years and years. And that's, it's so, it's exceptional to be able to withstand that, you know? So anybody who, you know, withstands that and becomes great is, is, has my respect and, and my eyes to watch them and learn, you know, cause that's, that's the way I do it, man. I work hard and I don't cut corners and I'm always trying to learn. I'm a student first, you know, and I say, I seek out the best coaches and the best partners that I can have. And at the end of the day, you know, they lock the cage, I go get in a fist fight and I, and I just let it all hang loose and hope it works out for the best. And, you know, let me ask you, end of the fight, end of the night, what's Dana White going to be saying about Mitch Ramirez? I think he's going to realize he's got a new, he's got a new thoroughbred in the stable. He's got himself a real, a real hard charger ready to go, man. I think that, you know, the way I see this fight going and, and everything else with, uh, with the UFC, I, I know that they're, I know they're already impressed. You know, I wouldn't be here if they're not impressed. So I go do my thing and I do what I'm capable of. And I promise you, Dana White will be thinking about me as he lays his head on that pillow that night going, oh man, we, we got a live one. And going forward, if all goes well and you win that fight at the contract, how busy would you like to be for the rest of 2023? I'd like to get one more in by the end of the year, for sure. I think that after the fight, you know, decompress a little bit. And then, you know, I'd li- I would like to fight maybe like November, December, you know, get one in before Christmas and the holidays be able to take the holiday in the new year to just kind of revel in the fact that I'm a UFC fighter as well. You know, I like to get to work. I, I'm not going to take a bunch of time off. I'll be right back. I mean, if they, if they tell me, Hey, fight in September, I'll probably say yes. You know, <laughs> I don't really care. Like I, I stay in shape. I do my thing, but to really put my best foot forward, uh, I would, I would like to get one in, in November or December. Fair enough. Well, Mitch, I'm wishing you the best of luck. And just my final question, you know, August 29th, Mitch Ramirez, Carlos Parades. Mitch, give me your official prediction. Official prediction is me beating the dog shit out of him. <laughs> no, the official prediction is me going out there, man, and doing what I like to do. I'm gonna go forward. I'm gonna hit him hard. I'm gonna mix it up, and he's gonna be in. A, he's gonna be in the toughest fight of his life, and that's it. You know, I can't say whether it's gonna be this or that. How I'm gonna get it done or do that. Part of that's gonna be on his reactions and the reads I make off of him because that's fighting, right? It's a it's a live action sport. It's it's not a there's there's no plays. There's no there's nobody to pass the ball to. So, you know, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to implement my will. Let's put it that way. And, you know, I mean, and I'm ready to, and I'm ready to take damage too. If he's, if he's got, if he's got a dog in him too, and he's, and I'm sure he's been working his ass off too. We're going to put on a hell of a show. I promise you that no matter what you will be entertained. I think that's all that needs to be said. Guys, Mr. Mirrors is set to headline Dana White's contender series on August 29th. When he faces Carlos Brates, you won't want to miss it. And Mitch, if there's anyone you want to shout out, any socials, Here's your chance. Yeah, man. Uh, I just want to shout out all my coaches, you know, over at Syndicate, John Wood, Billy Biggs, uh, Chris Trammell, you know, all, all the guys, Danny Garcia, all the guys that have worked with me recently. Uh, I want to shout out everybody back in Utah, all my coaches, you know, Court, Court McGee, Dana, Dana Aristizabal, uh, over at uh, Agima Jiu Jitsu, you know, everybody that's ever, you know, been a part of my success, you know, whether it was early or late, all my training partners and just, you know, Big, big shout out to Legacy, Legacy, uh, Notorious. Uh, those guys have had my back like no, like no one else. Some other sponsors as well, you know, Water Wellness, Champ X Meals. But more than anything, man, I just want to, I want to just uh, tell anybody that's struggling, man, anybody who's been through something, anybody who's, who's going through a tough time, you know, I hope I can inspire you. You know, anybody who's feeling like they're down and out or that there's just no hope left and feels like quitting. You know, I'm here to tell you not to quit. I'm here to tell you to stick around, keep trying. It can get better. If I can do it, shit, man. If I can do what I've done, man, you can you can do just about anything is what I'll say. So for the underdogs out there, keep your head up, keep moving. Let's go. This win's going to be for you guys. It's incredible to hear all this, Mitch. Thank you so much for taking the time and best of luck in your fight. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.